<laughs> okay, you're good. <laughs> All right. Hi, everybody. This is Kenan Crick with Second Harvest of the Greater Valley, and we are here today with Joe Tobin of Atka Food Bank up here in Jamestown, and we're going to have a conversation today about what's going on up here at Atka Food Bank because they are a fellow food bank partner of ours at Second Harvest of the Greater Valley. And we want to take this opportunity to highlight what they're doing in in their community up here in the Jamestown and Sonora and Tuolumne County area. So Joe, uh, just like to take this time and opportunity to talk with you a little bit about what's going on up here at ATCA. Uh, let's highlight some things that are happening up here in the community. Sure, thank you. We appreciate your time coming up here and um, putting us in the spotlight. Yeah. Uh, so once again, we are the ATCA Food Bank. Um, that stands for Amador Tuolumne Community Action Agency. Um, and basically, like Keenan said, we're a partner with the, uh, Second Harvest of the Greater Valley, um, Feeding America. We have a number of different funds that allow us to purchase food, um, either for the emergency food assistance program, uh, for farmers market programs, through the, we use a lot of farm to family food for that. Um, and then, being part of Feeding America allows us to purchase a lot of food for our partner pantries at pennies on the dollar. Um, so we go down to the second harvest about once a week and we pick up anywhere from four to eight pallets weekly and uh, we serve that food not only to our community um, partner pantries but also in our direct distributions. So. We have, like I said, our farmer's market that happens once a month, and that's always on the first Wednesday. That program was actually put on hold for the last couple months due to seasonal availability, but we've been blessed with some additional funding and food sources to allow us to continue that program earlier than we expected. Um, normally it runs May through October, but We've already started it uh, this this month of February, uh, last month in February, sorry, and now we're going to have our next one, um, April. I think it's going to be April seventh. It's going to be the next one. So um, be aware of that. That is open to the public. If you're eligible, um, contact us. Our phone number is two zero nine nine eight four three nine six zero. If you have any questions about any of the programs I'm going to talk about, um, feel free to give us a call. Um, let's see, we also have our emergency food assistance program, and that happens monthly also on the third Tuesday of the month. And again, if you want to find out about program eligibility, just give us a call. Um, we serve about, I want to say, 600 families, plus or minus, and um, that, that food is the food that comes through, if you heard of the old cheese line, that's the uh, bread and cheese line, that's the same program that has been greatly expanded on. Um, so there's a lot of good foods in there, a lot of options. Um, we have satellite sites available also, so if you can't make it directly to the food bank, um, feel free to either go to our website, um, which is, you can find our the food bank through atca.org, that's A-T-C-A-A.org. Um, if you want to go directly to the food bank, it's atca.org front slash food dash bank. And um, you can see a list of the programs there as well as um, a schedule. Can you tell people geographically what area you cover? So we cover all of Tuolumne County, which is uh, all the way out to um, LaGrange, uh, Twain Hart, and um, all of Sonora, Jamestown. Um, so if you're not sure, if you're eligible, give us a call. If you're in Tuolumne County, you're eligible. Okay. And, and you're, you're within the income guidelines, you're eligible. So, um, and, and again, we have 14 partner agencies that can help you get some food if you're in need and you can't make it to our facility in Jamestown at one of our distributions. So feel free to, to reach out. Okay. So, so we're gonna take a little, little tour here through the food bank and just kind of Joe's going to talk a little bit about some of the some of the things that you see here within the food bank and highlight some of the good things that are going on also try and highlight some of the needs you know as a part of food banking 
we are nonprofit organizations, and we're dependent upon the general public for donations, financial supports, and other needs. So we really want to try and, you know, obviously we've been blessed with many great, great things that we're able to then uh, take that and provide that for the community. But then there are also continual needs, uh, infrastructure, uh, transport, and up here in the Foothill region, I'm sure access and transportation is a big barrier for sure. people to be able to access food. Uh, but then also along that storage for the food, uh, there's a lot of people that need to be fed. And so the food bank uh, is here to store a lot of food, but that can only be done, that can only be done uh, in a limited amount of space. So you really have to try and maximize the resources. So Joe can talk a little bit about some of the things that they've already done or that they might be in need of to help with the storage of their food. Right, and I think you kind of nailed it with infrastructure. That's one of the things is that we feel kind of holds us back is we have, we have funding for food, but we don't necessarily have funding for building capacity. Um, so we were actually granted um, some funding through the CDSS for um, improvements on our freezer. Let me back up. It's actually a refrigerator and it's pretty outdated and it's rather small, but we're going to, in the next month, month or two, replace this with an actual freezer. Um, it's going to be 30 feet by 18 feet by 10 feet high. So that gives us approximately 540 square feet um, of freezer space. And that is going to house a lot of the frozen perishables that we get through our emergency food assistance program and um, some of the other foods that we outsource. Um, we also do get some frozen goods from Feeding America from, through Second Harvest. Um, so that's, that's real important because we only got so much funding towards that, so your community donations help us complete this project. Um, we're pretty close, but we still need additional funding to make that happen. Um, but one step at a time, right? Um, so another thing that we were able to do was just get a new refrigerated truck. Um, I'm not sure if we talked about that last time or not, uh, but we were using an old truck. It worked, but it was outdated and very hard to use for some of the volunteers. Um, but with community donations and um, state funding, we're able to make that happen. So now it's a little bit easier for our volunteers and staff to get our, our, our pickups of uh, food from Antica, um, local places that we shop at. So that's, that's been a big help as well. Um, but we still have additional needs. Um, we have no insulation on the ceiling so um, we'd like to update that in the future at some point um, it's nice and cool in here right now but in the summertime it does tend to warm up so we wind up having to use giant fans and swamp coolers which just raises the electricity bill so again your donations help cover such things um, we also want to get some new racking um, our racking that you see right here this is some brand new racking but some of our other racking is kind of on the the uh, the older the older side and maybe not really set up for a food bank like that distributes the volume that we distribute now and it deals with the capacity and weights that we deal with so if we can get funding to help us purchase new racking that's that's wonderful um, because this is a, a count Tuolumne County building um, any project that we do here over a certain dollar amount um, triggers a public works project which if any of you know what that means prevailing wage RFPs um, bids public bids um, so the price goes up so funding towards that would be a big big help uh, we're also looking at getting some additional help through the state for um, new forklifts and uh, some new pallet, uh, rack, uh, pallet jacks. Um, so that should be coming through hopefully in the next couple months. We were just told today. So we'll see what happens, fingers crossed. <laughs> and how do things like pallet jacks and forklifts aid in 
building capacity and helping you move more food around. So without those, I mean, we're just manually moving everything with a, a, you know, a manual pallet jack. And it's, if you try to move 2,500 pounds with a manual pallet jack, you know, it's almost impossible, especially if the ground is not completely level. So even if you park in a truck and the truck's at a slight slope, you're not going to be able to move it by hand. A lot of times you'll just slip and fall on your rear. So having an electric pallet jack, which costs between three to five thousand dollars for one, uh, I mean that, that's a game changer. Um, so those kinds of things are, you know, things that you learn as you go, right? Like one of them is nice to have, but then you have other staff who have to wait to do their job because that one in use. So we've now just procured another one. Uh, so we're we're pretty good on that right now, but our forklift, see, all we have is our sit-down LP forklifts. We're in a limited space inside of here. So not only do you have, I mean, we keep the doors open, but not only do you have um, limited space, which makes it hard to get some of these pallets, as you see back over here, that's a narrow aisle. Mm -hmm. So not only does it make it hard to put away, now we're having a buildup of carbon monoxide. I mean, we keep the air moving, but what our goal is, is to get a stand-up reach truck. And a stand-up reach truck would be electric. So we would plug it in at the end of the day or the end of the week whenever it needs to be charged. And we don't have to worry about propane costs. Uh, so okay. I, think, I, think, I think charging it would be cheaper, you know, and cleaner for the environment. Right. So um, that's one of our next goals. It's on the project wish list. <laughs> Um, we talked a lot about equipment, infrastructure, and all that. How about volunteers? You know, I know for us at Second Harvest of the Greater Valley, we're definitely needed with volunteers. And I know, obviously, with COVID, uh, a lot of restrictions you yeah. on volunteers. So, so what's, what's going on there? What we're doing is we're, we're limiting the number of volunteers that we have right now because of COVID. Um, but we do screen any volunteer that comes through. So if you are interested, um, we, we do have a couple areas where we could use just a couple volunteers. Um, so if you are interested, please feel free to reach out. And again, we have a screening form that we make sure that everybody's, you know, going to pass the test, so to speak, when they come through the doors. But, uh, we always have, um, a need for volunteers at our farmer's market distributions. And, and again, they're all held outside now. They're all the drive through drive up model. Mm -hmm. So. Um, we, we allow for social distancing, um, and so we could use help. We, we use help packing the carts. We use help with cart runners, uh, loading the cars. Uh, so there's plenty of opportunities. Um, we also have opportunities for folks to come through and help us prior to the distribution, getting ready for that distribution where we bag up potatoes and oranges and carrots and things like that. Um, so it obviously doesn't happen by itself. It, it's, it's because of volunteers that. that allow us to make this happen. We're, we're short, short staff, we're kind of a skeleton group. I wanna say we have five on staff and uh, only only three of us are full-time. Is so. there age restrictions? We like to keep it to 18. Okay. Um, it just it just makes makes it a little bit easier so because especially uh, if, if a younger child is out in the parking lot and not really aware of their surroundings, then so 18 and over like and are you still accepting food donations we are still accepting it's a great question thank you we're still accepting food donations um, we accept Monday through Friday from 8 to 1 p.m. Okay. and um, with that being said I wanted to give a shout out to the Sonora Area Foundation for helping us uh, with a large donation recently and for partnering with the Motherload Food Project, who also helped us bring in a lot of donations in the way of not just physical donations, but monetary donations through the pandemic. So we have a group, um, once again, it's called the Motherload Food Project, and uh, they fill up these green bags and they would bring them in every other month. But because of the pandemic, they wanted to find a way to continue to support us while allowing for social distancing. So they got all their partners together and decided, well, let's just donate in cash what we would have spent at the store. And so they collected all these funds and the Sonora Area Foundation, um, Daryl Slocum, 
and a couple of other folks there agreed to match the donations that the Mother Love Food Project provided. So we just uh, recently got a check for about twenty thousand dollars. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So um, so we're doing really good with that, and that what happens with those donations is it allows us to redistribute those to the to our fourteen partner agencies at no cost. That's free to them. So. And the reason that's nice, I mean, physical donations are wonderful too, but monetary donations, they, they kind of allow us to outsource and buy pallets of food, which then allows these pantries, our, our partners, to buy cases of this stuff instead of buying just mixed and matched food, you know? I mean, food's food, but it's, it's nice to also be able to kind of put together a menu for the clients you're going to serve. Uh, so, so it makes it a little bit easier when they distribute. It gives a little bit more equity. Um, things you know, things are a little bit more even across the board. So okay. it, it provides for more choices too, and a, and a lot of times if they purchase or if they pick up that item, because again these are free, if they pick up that item and they decide they like it, most likely we're going to have it again on their next on their next shopping trip. And then if it turns out to be something that they really enjoy, then we can add that to our kind of list of regular things that we buy, and we can purchase it again in the future. Okay. So. Thank you to Sonora Area Foundation and the Mother Load Food Project. And uh, what else do you want to show us? Yeah, I want to show you guys all kinds of stuff. <laughs> Come on over here. So the majority of this food that you see on these racks, this is food. A lot of this food is food that comes through uh, the second har second harvest of Greater Valley. And um, you know, again, we're part of Feeding America, so this food is purchased at a really good price which allows it, us to pass those savings on to our partners. Um, so uh, we do also have a couple other funds that allow us to purchase food. Um, we outsource. Um, so because we buy by the pallet, we get discounts. Um, so it's, it's, it's cheaper than somebody going and using their own money and going to Walmart or Save Mart or something like that, a big box store, and, and purchasing something off the shelf. So it, sa it kind of saves us some money. So this is a mix. This food over here is a mix of Feeding America food and purchased food. Got it. Um, and as a point of clarification, the people that are coming to receive food from you, mm -hmm. they pay nothing for it. It's a nothing. free service. Never, never, never charge. Yes. Nope. That I know of. Yeah. <laughs> no, that, it's all, it's all free. And that was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> so this room here, uh, I think we covered this on our last uh, little tour, but this room here is our packing room. So what we do is. Uh, for our, our monthly EFAP distribution, we put together a menu of items that are going to go into a bag. We'll pre-count um, how many families we're going to serve, and we'll set up all these tables to the ceiling with all the different items. And then this room is uh, it's, uh, climate controlled, so to speak, so we can close the doors when it's cold in here, and volunteers and staff can work in here comfortably, because um, we can kick the heater on, and then in the summer we can kick on the AC. Um, so this is our packing room. It's not a clean room, so we, we are not allowed to um, buy bulk beans and rice and, and repackage it. We're not allowed to do that. We would need HEPA filters and all kinds of other stuff. Um, that's kind of an expensive undertaking, but maybe one day. Yes. But for now, um, this is just our building slash packing room. Okay. Um, these here, I think we talked about this last time. These are our um, chest freezers that we have. We have about 14 of these. And what we do is if we have a pantry that is in need of, say they don't have a trans, uh, transportation truck that's refrigerated, uh, and it's summertime, they're worried about getting yogurt and, and, and frozen meats and whatnot back to their place safely, we'll pre-freeze one of these, get it going, and then they come and they pick it up, we preload it. Well, we won't preload it or it makes it hard to lift, but we'll get it pre-chilled and then they can take it back um, once they get it into the truck, they can put all the food into it and take it back to the facility. Keeps it safe. And sometimes we have, um, let's see, we have, I think we have the senior center's freezer go down and um, they needed some chest freezers. So we had a couple, we loaned them to them until they were ready to bring them back. So we also use this um, to store retail rescue products. So Walmart donates uh, frozen meats that are, um, they just met the code date. So we go out and we pick those up and we store them in here. Crab legs, roast, ribs, chicken. 
So uh, we, they donate quite a bit. We, we pick up from them weekly. And um, I want to say we get anywhere from 500 to 1,000 pounds a week from Walmart. So, and, and that's a big help because these pantries are able to, the pantries are able to get this food for free. So, very nice. Um, Where else can we? We we get banana boxes. We have a good supply of them right now, and um, we just ask that uh, we we loan them out to our pantries, and we just ask that they bring them back when they're done. That this helps helps them transport the food. And normally we have to go out and collect these in the community, and we just got offered as many as we could use indefinitely. Wow. So I have a new line on those, so I think that'll be it's wonderful. I don't think we have to go out into the community and search for them anymore. That's amazing. And, and you know, half the time when you're out in the community, these, these are the little things that people really don't think about. Hey, right. You gotta put the food in something. So a lot of times when we were going out in the community getting these, they're either stored in the rain, or there's there would be mice and spiders inside of them, and you gotta pick and choose between what box is a good box, and which box isn't stained and trash. So, um, so it would be nice to have a good line on these boxes. That's excellent. Yeah, so. And then we have another side of our warehouse over here. So this food over here is primarily all um, outsourced purchase foods and foods that, are come, that come to us through our emergency food assistance program. This is the commodity, the cheese line program I was talking about. Um, and so if you want to take a step over here, I can actually show you. Not just cheese. Not just cheese. <laughs> I can give you a little uh, idea of kind of what our menu consists of. So if you can, I'll, I'll just let it go. Mm -hmm. So if you can see, uh, a, this standard bag has a couple cans of applesauce and green beans, peanut butter, tomato soup, vegetable soup, rice, split peas, um, chicken pouches, and egg noodles. And that's all in one bag. So again, I think they probably built enough for 600 we, we kind of gotta we gotta put it together a menu monthly that kind of makes sense we want to have a balance we want to have we, we'd like to try to have fruit um, some of the basic staples uh, veggies uh, we try to keep it rounded but that's not all they get so they're gonna get they're gonna get this bag and then they're also gonna get the frozen items I talked about now sometimes we still do get cheese through that through that program <laughs> Um, and it's really nice stuff. Oh, there we go. Oh, Hello. Okay. Hi, we're back. Hey. Okay. okay. So we found boundaries. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and, and another thing I wanted to share too is that um, when we get when we get donations through the community, we we use those also to buy food. And for our holiday our holiday food baskets that we had for the end of 2020, both Thanksgiving and, and Christmas. We had some leftover foods because we, we bought more than we would need just in case. It, with the pandemic, we had no idea how many people were going to be in need um, versus prior years. So the foods that we had left over are now going to our pantries. So everybody's getting cake and jiffy muffins and uh, hams and all kinds of good stuff. Um, so Excellent. Do uh, you have anything else that we want to highlight or need that we need to express? Um, again, just if, you, if you're interested in volunteering, uh, feel free to reach out. Um, and if you'd like to donate, again, there is a, a spot to donate on the website. Again, the, just uh, reference the website is ATCA, which is A-T-C-A-A dot -A org. And if you go there, you can see all of our other programs because we are a community action agency. We're not just a food bank. So we have plenty of other programs. Um, feel free to go there and check it out. But on that page, you can find the link to the, to the food bank's website. And again, that will tell you all of our distribution sites, uh, our partner pantries. It'll give you a schedule of distribution dates and times. Um, and uh, yeah, just, just check it out. And if you have any questions, call us. Again, the phone number is 209-984-3960. Um, other than that, help me out here, Keenan. Well, I think I think you covered most of it. Um, you, know, you identified your needs. You highlighted a lot of the great things that you're doing. Um, we're just appreciative to be out here and be able to highlight you and really talk about the great partnerships that we have with you and helping feed Tuolumne County. So that's yeah, that's yeah. really what we're 
we're here to do is really try and make sure and get the get the word out there that you're here to help feed Tuolumne County. Well, we appreciate it. We definitely couldn't do it alone. And you guys, again, you guys are wonderful partners. Um, I just wanted to give a shout out to uh, Keenan and his team for allowing us to store some additional foods on, on site down at their facility since we are in such a pinch. Until the freezer that we spoke about is, is completed, um, we are short on space. And uh, these folks are gracious enough to allow us to bring some product down there until we are in a better position. So thank you guys for that. Yeah, and we're all in it together. So we definitely want to help each other out. So thank you again, Joe, and thanks to ATCA for helping feed, feed Tuolumne County. That's awesome. Thank you. Appreciate it.